Welcome to the Damcasters. I'm your host, Matt Bone. On the 28th of January 1986, Space Shuttle Challenger lifted off on STS-51L. 73 seconds later, she exploded, following a failure of the O-rings on Challenger's right-side solid rocket booster. I watched the launch live at school in Canada as high school teacher Krista McAuliffe was going to be the first civilian in space as part of NASA's Teacher in Space project. I remember that morning vividly. Last week, a message from historian David O'Keefe had me watching NASA's news feed. It was announced that the team behind the History Channel's new series, the Bermuda Triangle, Intercursed Waters, had found a 20-foot section of Challenger. Today, David and filmmaker and historical investigator Wayne Abbott join me to discuss this incredible discovery and their return to the Atlantic as they strive to solve the mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle after COVID cut short their last search. I open our chat by asking, as the world shut down in 2020, where did that leave them in their search of the Bermuda Triangle for the Lost Avengers of Flight 19? Well, I guess it kind of left us high and dry to start with. Um, you know, we were, uh, I don't know, we felt like we were getting close, very close. And then COVID hit. And then, of course, um, we ended up losing our ride, the petrol. And um, so we were, you know, kind of feeling like um, the old, if you will, the old show, The Fugitive, where you're looking for the one-armed man. And somewhere the one-armed man is still out there and you just can't get him at the moment. I love that show. I'm showing my age now. It was reruns for me, but there we go. But and and uh, you know, at, Wayne, how did the conversations start for getting the project going again? Because, like you said, you know, the, no, no RV petrol this time, which is means you're you're down on toys before you even start. Well, it was, but uh, that was maybe the biggest issue and the biggest disappointment of the two-hour series we did because um, we wanted to search deeper water. That's where we believe. The planes of flight 19 are but at the same time our dive team headed up by michael barnett did a lot of shallower dives um right up the coast of florida and came across numerous wrecks and that really intrigued the network so even though we lost petrol there was probably more emphasis than on michael's dives and he came across the sandra a ship that he identified and this is what then started talking not only was the two hour special very successful on history channel um then they thought okay how can we spin this how can we develop this into a series and a lot of it was based on the shallow dives of that two hour special so that's what we've taken now into the six part series where every episode we come across something extraordinary on a seabed mainly um mysterious and unknown ship and plane wrecks so that's kind of the heart of this six-part series is uh, is searching for new wrecks and telling their stories at the same time getting into the great mysteries of this area that we call the Bermuda Triangle. Yeah, that's essentially how we're doing it. I mean, we're working off, if you will, Barney's wreck map. And that's what we kind of refer to it as, you know, Barney's wreck map. <laughs> and then it's just a question of hitting all the dots. And of course, the divers go down, they do their recce. They find whatever they find, they bring it up, and that's where Wayne and I come in. Now we put the puzzle pieces together. I mean, that's the idea. Sometimes we'll do the archival search, the land search, and, you know, like I said, just putting the puzzle pieces together. That's why they call us it. So you've mentioned a couple of names there. So who's the rest of the team? So you guys, I guess, are keeping your feet reasonably dry on this one again. We have. I mean, I, I've had an, I had the opportunity in two of the later shows, you see, that I get to go down into a submersible. For the first time, I mean, as a TV producer, director, I've done lots of shipwreck films, and, um, but I've always been the, the guy sitting on the, <laughs> on the deck waiting for the divers to come up. This time I was able to get into a submersible and go down up to like 550 feet to look at new wrecks. So that's one that that's a little bit later, but um, there's Dave and I, then there's really our, our leader and the lead diver is Michael Barnett, who's wouldn't you say, Dave, one of the most experienced divers in Florida, and he's been searching these waters forever. And then the other cast member is Jason Harris, who's an Air Force pilot. And uh, he comes in on three of the shows that are focused specifically on plane wrecks. 
Yeah, and then we have uh, what we would consider to be almost like our Kenny, which is Jimmy Gadonski, and he works with um, he works with uh, Mike, and of course he's one of the divers. And you will see right at the top of the show uh, why we kind of consider him Kenny. <laughs> so you'll notice that right away. <clears throat> no, Jimmy is a he's a great diver, and yeah. he's been diving with Mike for years. He's out of Florida as well, so Mike and and Jimmy are are crucial, and of course. What everybody knows in the first episode now, since NASA announced it, that we found a a section of Challenger. You know, Jimmy had just as much to do with that as, oh, yeah. as Michael did. So they they are really our our true dive team. So let's let's set the scene here. So the series is the Bermuda Triangle into Cursed Waters. It starts Tuesday, the twenty second of November on History Channel in the US. We get it here on Sky History in January. Um, so we're probably gonna spoil it for everybody by the time this this goes out but we'll we'll try not to let's just sort of do some geography here what would you guys consider the bermuda triangle as your search area because i know the the challenger part which we're going to come to is found a little bit further out from that but what what sort of the the ballpark that you guys are are playing with with your your map of wrecks oh i mean it's traditionally there there is no specific boundary for the triangle it's just understood there's an imaginary line that runs from bermuda down to the tip of florida over to puerto rico and back up whoever, whoever you talk to or if you look at stuff um that's kind of roughly the area and we do search in and near the triangle so i guess to get into this because this is a bit everyone wants to hear is what what's the sort of breadcrumbs that lead you outside of those search areas? You said you have your, your map of wrecks. What's that process that sort of, look, let's start talking about Challenger that, that led you to search the area where you found the section of uh, the space shuttle? Well, a lot of times it's just a question of logistics. In other words, what we have available at our time. I mean, we, uh, you know, we, we can only dive to certain depths. And so as a result, that's pretty much what we have done. Um, as I mentioned, Mike Barnett has put together this incredible map. Uh, with all the different unknown wrecks or possibilities of wrecks. And so it's just a question of, you know, checking each one off as we go. So usually what we do is they go down, they do a quick little recce dive, establish, generally speaking, what it is. Then we decide whether we're going to, ex you know, to, to expand on it. And that's the key. Yeah, it's understood that Mike, Mike gets a lot of his um, information of where potential wrecks are by really talking to fishermen in the area. And that's a consistent story in our series is like, where did Mike come up with this, you know, map of where all these mystery wrecks are. And a lot of it is just over the years, you know, he would talk to a fisherman and they, they, Oh, I snagged something out here at this coordinates or I snagged or I, yeah. you know, there is something strange by our finders that there could be something. Because where wrecks are is where the fish are, or where the fish are is where wrecks are. Um, and again, another constant theme that goes through our show. But Mike compiled this map. So there was numerous different levels to the reconnaissance. In the shallow waters, him and Jimmy went out and just would drop down and take a look. And then in the deeper waters, that's why we had a research vessel um, called the Odyssey that you'll see in the final two episodes where we literally take one of the most biggest state-of-the-art ships in the world and uh, go around in the waters and we multi-beam to see if there's anything there. And then we took submersibles down to look at those wrecks. So we have the shallower and we have the deeper, but it's fascinating to see our journey um, over the six episodes and how, uh, how we find the wrecks. I found that interesting in the first show that that sort of is almost the dichotomy of the, the super high tech on petrol and then Mike and his fishermen. And, you know, that, that, yeah. that, that sort of mm -hmm. that comparison there was superb. And I'm, I'm really excited that this, this series is being able to just expand on that because yeah, as a geek and if that, the, our, our, yeah, that's uh, good. Well, you're going to, you're going to geek I, out I, a I lot. Really, of I'm really excited. Definitely. Every show is like that. Every show has that in it. Yeah. Well, the fun part about it is you never know what you're going to find. And that was exactly the case with, with Challenger. I mean, you know, they popped down and, you know, I guess you could say they kind of pulled the Forrest Gump in the sense that we were looking for something else and came across that, which was absolutely incredible. And, you know, so this is something that uh, you never know what you're going to find when you're off the shores. 
And, and the reason why they were, just to interject, the reason why they were mm -hmm. in that area outside of the triangle is that, you know, our holy grail is to find any one of the five planes that are part of the Fight Flight 19. And these were Avenger torpedo bombers that went out in December, I think December 5th, 1945, and all five of them, we believe, are in the triangle. There was a sixth plane, a Martin Mariner, it was a rescue plane, 13 men on board that disappeared that night as well and that's why they were out of the triangle searching this area because we don't believe that the mark mariner is in the triangle but this is exactly where the debris of challenger fell so that's why those two stories overlapped we haven't found the mark mariner but jimmy and uh, mike came across this incredible section of challenger so I remember when we last spoke, you said there was a lot of mapping done after the Challenger disaster of, of that era when they were recovering the parts of it. So did you guys have any inkling that that might be out there or was it just purely focused on the Mariner? Not at all. I think all of us believe that that Challenger was all picked up. I mean, it was even a shock to Mike after all these years and he and Jimmy, both of them are from Florida. We all just assume that they picked up every chunk of Challenger. The irony, I guess, is the fact that here we are using the data, you know, in part, along with the, you know, the fisherman stories um, to be able to, you know, go through and establish these wrecks. And we end up finding part of Challenger, which, you know, spurred the whole, you know, uh, scanning of the area to start with. But, you know, as Wayne said, I found it uh, shocking because you would have thought that they would have pulled up every single piece of Challenger for their investigation. And so as a result, they haven't. And this is a sizable chunk, roughly about 20 something feet. And uh, we're not really sure exactly what part we've got our theories, but NASA has asked us to wait out on that uh, before anybody says anything. They'll make the announcement and confirmation of exactly what part it is. So let's get into that. What was that like? So we, we've seen, we've seen the trailer, the divers down. It's clearly not a Mariner. What what sort of is feedback? What did you guys hear? What was the first you heard that the divers had found something odd? I mean, they first did the reconnaissance, I believe, in March. Then they did a second dive in May. And to be honest, I can't remember when the phone call came in, but it was stunning. I mean, we were all just, um, I think our hearts stopped and went, really? I mean, just we were in awe that we found something like that and really were humbled at the same time because... Yeah. I mean, all of us know, you know, we, we all remember where we were um, when Challenger exploded. So we, we knew we found something special and, uh, and that's why it was handled the way it did. There was a protocol we followed. And yeah. right when Mike and Jimmy suspected it was, Mike went to an astronaut friend of his, Bruce Melnick, to get, you know, kind of a first confirmation um, but then went to NASA directly to get the final confirmation and then let NASA, it was by their direction, we kind of uh, told the story and they were the ones who announced it. Yeah, it was quite something. I mean, you can imagine, I, you know, as Wayne mentioned, this is a signpost in history. It means a lot to American history in particular, and also to the world. I mean, we're talking about space exploration. And um, so, you know, as a result, it was very delicate, particularly when you're dealing with the deaths of seven people and what this means. So the protocol was, was really quite something. And after that, we basically had to sit on the story until now. Um, and they had to go through the proper protocols of getting in touch with the families. And I, you know, get the blessing of the families. And then I think it was last, it must've been last Wednesday, just before we broke it, we kind of got a rocket <laughs> saying, okay, this is how it's going to go. Tomorrow morning, it's going to be at the White House at 9 a.m., Congress 9.30, and then NASA will break the story at 10 o'clock. And it was like, oh, my God, like we didn't realize. Like we knew it was big, but we didn't understand the, you know, the significance of the protocol. <laughs> so that was quite something. But we've also heard back from Dick Scobie, the pilot. His widow has been very kind, and she came out, and she publicly said how important this was, not only for her family, but also for American history. So that was a big relief, because we were a little concerned what the families may think of all this. But I think they understand. They understand that in many cases, this is, you know, it's a personal tragedy for their family, but it's also a, a massive historical moment. The whole element around that that particular mission as well, because uh, Krista McAuliffe, at school, Canada, I was what was goodness um 
trying to do the math for how old I was now. That was eight, so I was seven or eight. And it was a big thing that there was a teacher going to space. So we, we, we yeah. watched it. At, we watched it at school. We all went in that morning and had an early lunch, watched it on telly and the telly got turned off very quickly. Um, so I, yeah. you know, for, you know, we're recording this in the day that, that the first Artemis mission has flown and that was pretty big news, even though it was the middle of the night. But I guess people just sort of think of the space shuttle missions as routine, but that one was huge. So that's why this has so much resonance, even now, 30 or 40 years later, almost. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a, you know, you were talking about, we were talking about signposts. And for me, that was what I remember. I remember watching it and then seeing the look on the faces of her family when they suddenly realized that something had gone horrifically wrong. And that's the image that la that lasts with me more than anything else. And being a, you know, per teacher myself, I, you know, there, there, there's a lot of sympathy and empathy there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, it's one of those, you know, nine 11 challenger, those moments in your lifetime that you remember where you were. I was in my young twenties at that point as well. Um, so I think all of us, uh, we're humbled by the find as much as anything else. Yeah. So what it's been, it's been a few days now since the news has come out. What, what's the reaction generally been, you know, the, the families have, have been, have, have been very generous. What's the sort of been the overall feeling granted. Yeah. I immediately got onto Dave and like, right. We're talking round up Wayne, um, <laughs> yeah. but what, what's, yeah. what's been the, um, the sort of general feeling. Cause it's, it's, it seems super positive. It's been all over the world. I think yeah. it, I think we knew the American press were going to be very interested, but it's, it's an international story because it didn't matter whether you're in America or we're Canadian. Um, everybody felt it. Like they said, you're in UK, everybody felt the challenger and it's just, I, I think that's the most remarkable thing is the entire world media has honed in on this story. And the other thing that I found special is that I, I would notice on some of even the Canadian networks. They didn't really, you know, they, they of course did a story on our find, but then they would go and do another story just on challenger itself. And I think that's the most beautiful thing about it is that it's brought that story back to a younger generation and then they reminisce. So there was other stories just on challenger alone, which I feel is probably the best thing about the find is that the story was brought back so people could remember it. And it was right in and around Remembrance Day too, which even made it even more special. Yeah. I kind of expected, you know, that there'd be a lot of red, white, and blue uh, over this. And, you know, without a doubt there was, Americans are extremely proud of the space program. And, but at the same time, there's something that transcends that. I mean, space travel, that that's universal, you know, and the fact that they're American, that comes secondary to the rest of the world. And that certainly you can see that with the way this story has been picked up around the world in almost every language. I think, uh, I, I, I think part of our team has been approached even by the Russians for interviews. So it gives you an example of just even- We turn the, them down. Yeah, we turn <laughs> them down. Yeah, turn them down on behalf of integrity. Ukraine. integrity. Yes, we have a yeah, war going down. on. <laughs> yeah, but that gives you an example. It gives you an example right there of the kind of impact that space travel and the Challenger disaster had. That that's wonderful, wonderful to hear. And it, it I know when it it popped up. Yeah, I, th I think you, you sent me a link saying, "Be be aware at yeah eleven o'clock or when it, whenever it was." And yeah, sorry, 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 day job. But I was yeah frantically googling what was what was going to happen. It, it was amazing. But let's. Uh, let's not go too much into because that's the whole first part of a, a six part series. You've, you've got five more parts. You've been talking, you know, Rex, you've got aircraft. Um, no, we even have sink. We even have sink. Holes. Sink holes. Yep. One of my favorite episodes. Yeah. Um, we discover, uh, so yeah, so we have different wrecks, planes and ships. Very intriguing. A lot of great underwater footage, a lot of great mysteries to solve. Some of them we solve, some of them we almost solve. But then both teams, we divided up. Our dive team went to a sinkhole off the, like a deep water sinkhole. It's about 40 miles off of Jacksonville. And Dave and I got to go to the Bahamas down to one of the greatest, the second deepest sinkhole in the world called uh, Dean's Blue Hole. And the two teams were exploring these sinkholes, which are basically vertical caves. Ours was 600, well, almost close to 600 feet down. And we were the first to send a, an ROV down and our divers went down. 
and made an incredible discovery in their sinkhole. So it's, you know, so we, we have some fun with it and we, we kind of go where no man has gone before and uh, nobody explored either one of these sinkholes. So that was one of my favorite episodes. Jacksonville or the bombs. Well, I mean, the yeah, idea is that, remember. That, that must have been a hard choice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That was horrible. That's, that's the thing about doing, you know, doing a show on the Bermuda Triangle. I mean, it's really horrible terrain. <laughs> yeah, horrible weather, except for the heat. You know, the heat is something else. But, you know, it's it's amazing because there's so many different phenomena. And that's the fun part of the show. We get a chance to look at some of the bizarre things, like Wayne was talking about, you know, uh, Dean's Blue Hole and Red Snapper Sink. And we also did Rogue Waves, which apparently were just fishermen's tales for many, many years. Well, turns out that may not necessarily be the case. And the fun part is we're working with researchers and scientists who are actually tackling these issues. So, you know, as much fun as we're having uh, doing this, we're also doing some hard hitting investigation, which is kind of cool. We're just doing it in a very accessible way. We even chase storms across Florida. Um, so we, yeah, so it's been, every episode was a, was a little, uh, you know, different adventure, especially for Dave and I. So I, I guess having that, um, well, three times as long, isn't it? That this this series, as opposed to the the last show, you, you you've got that breadth to spend a little bit more time, have a little bit more breadth, and just be able to sort of pause, take stock, and and really get into into the subject. Because the um, the last one was was really fast paced. It was great, and yeah, you know, Larry Fishburne popping up and reminding us how exciting everything was. So I, I guess that that was the best. Larry Fishburne yeah. said our names, man. Larry said our names. It was great. I was more thrilled over that than anything, that Lawrence Fishburne, Morpheus, said Wayne Abbott and David O'Keefe. We made it. We don't have Lawrence on this one, but we have another great uh, announcer. But no, it is a fast pace. It is. Um, great series, a lot of adventure, a lot of mystery. Again, every episode is based on a dive, a discovery, and then also a different um, investigation into what do we call it? The, 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 the dark force of the Bermuda triangle. Yes. yes. The curse, the curse, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah. part of the, part of the fun, part of the charm, I think is also the team effort. I mean, uh, you can see as the, as the show progresses, the kind of buddy, buddy nature. I mean, Wayne and I have always had that together and we've been doing that for years on war junk and other shows that we've worked on. But uh, it's a blast coming together with Mike and Jimmy and Jason, and it's, it's a hell of a lot of fun. And I think that's one of the charms for the viewer, that they're going to feel like they're part of the team as well. I just have six weeks to wait for it, and everyone else has got six days by the time this goes. That's not, that's not really... That's not... Yeah, just so you know, any Canadians listening to this, it airs the same time as the U.S. network. So Yeah, November starts, 20th. Uh, oh, God, less than a mm -hmm. week now, six yeah. months away. And this is exciting for us. And this is the first time Dave and I are, besides the two hour special, you know, we've done lots of work worldwide, um, but say like a show like War Junk and another one, Buried War, never really made it into the state. So for us, this is, this is exciting for us to uh, finally have uh, American eyeballs on us. So yeah. it's kind of cool. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. The, the last one was, was really good fun and it, it felt, uh, it could be the editing, but then Dave told me a bunch of stuff. So it felt tantalizingly close to, to your goal. And we're not, we're not going to spoil it because hey, I want to watch it. So, yeah, if you guys, as soon as we hit pause and if you go, we found it, you're both dead to me because I want to watch it on the telly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess series is in the can. We're looking forward to it greatly. The, the first episode looks fantastic. It's, you know, it, that incredibly moving is, as, as we've been saying, to, to sort of take us back to, that incredible moment in in the 80s when the world came together and the, the world is, is seemingly to pausing again what this is a big question what's next you know one dave get over covid i suppose is what's next for him but yeah what, you, you guys are not you guys are never <laughs> I, I just gotta survive till monday <laughs> you guys are never standing still so what what's what's in the what's in the pipeline well, we're hoping season two. So if yeah. everybody watches, there's a lot of good buzz about the series yeah. um, because it has a lot of different elements. It has that curse of Oak Island feel, but at the same time, um, you know, it's very different. As Dave said, it has that buddy thing. I think there's some, you know, good characters and we come across some good characters and 
And even in the, the series, you know, there are episodes where we go to family members who loved ones were on these, these wrecks. And, you know, so there's also that emotional end that I think um, the series will draw in, um, hopefully co-viewing. Um, yeah. Don't think it's just a male dominated series. I think everybody, oh. especially kids will love it. Um, but that's what we're looking for. I mean, that's first is, is, um, is getting season two. That would be, that was, that's our ultimate goal. Otherwise, yeah. yeah, there's always numerous projects that we're working on. I'm in DC right now working on another project, but right now the focus is on into curse waters season two. Yeah. The idea being of course that, you know, we, uh, it's like the fugitive. We got to find the one armed man eventually. So, you know, that's part of the intrigue, even though we're, we're looking at all these other little mic, well, not micro mysteries, but other mysteries that come along, there's still that end game of solving flight 19, right? Figuring out where the Mariner is. And so that keeps us going. That keeps us going. I mean, it is the story. That's our, that's our Holy grail. Our Holy grail is flight 19, um, and the Mark Mariner and, uh, that will keep us going. Um, but at the same time, though it's there's an incredible amount of wrecks in this area of the ocean that i think we could keep going for a few seasons and yeah, still at least keep 10. coming across at mystery. least 10 <laughs> the coming of across Island, mystery at least wrecks. 10. yeah so even though we have the holy grail we're solving mysteries along the way which i think is is really quite fascinating and you'll hear about ships and stories and planes that you would never have heard of if we didn't do this series. Just, just echo, I think that's, that's, that's the big part as well is that is the families as well. Cause it, it's every, every wreck there's, there's a lot of people not on the yeah. wreck that are directly connected to it. And you guys did that so yeah. well last time talking with, with the various family members. So it, well, I think that's the important part. I mean, Wayne and I uh, were doing this when we did war junk, where we realized there was such an incredible emotional power with taking something uh, from the battlefield and reuniting it with the family. There's something about the tactile nature of it that really brings out emotions in people. And it's the same thing here. That doesn't go away. You know, when uh, you can imagine the kind of emotions with the shuttle crew families when they heard that this, you know, a big chunk had been found. Um, and it's the same thing with smaller wrecks, you know, and smaller aircraft and things like that. There is a human story. There is a human connection, not only to the people that were on board, but to the people who were left behind. Yeah. Gentlemen. Well said, yes, Dave. Very, yes. very well <laughs> said. Gentlemen, I know Wayne, you've got to shoot off. So this is, this is going to be a, a quickie, but this has been superb. And like I said, I think you might've spoiled my question about whether or not you found the flight or, or you're just teasing me, but we'll, 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 we'll see. There's, there's, You'll have, have to, to watch, watch all six episodes to find out what yeah. we meant yeah. by that. I got three words for you. NDA. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh. But we also do get into UAPs and UFOs, which is oh, a yeah. fun episode. Um, uh, especially with the release of all the Pentagon information uh, pertaining to what they now called UAPs, unidentified aerial phenomena. It, it's fascinating. I mean, yeah. I think Dave and I had a, a great time on our adventure. Um, not only say at times being out on the water, but other times just digging into these fascinating tales and myths yeah. and trying to get to the heart of them. I'm not going to go near that one. There's, there's, his, there's, his, <laughs> there's history there. We'll watch the episode, but yes, that's, that's for another time. Cause those documents look absolutely fantastic. The, the, the bits that I've seen people posting is just, that's an incredible treasure trove, but gentlemen, thank you so much for your time. Wayne, thank you for squeezing us into your busy schedule down in Washington. No problem. It's a pleasure, Matt. And we'll we'll have to have you back and we'll 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 do something a bit longer when we can gossip for a proper amount of time. We can, you know, once it all goes there in the UK, we can go through all six episodes and <laughs> tell you the behind the scenes of that each That would of them. be really good for Yeah, it'd be a lot of fun. That'd be a so, lot of fun. Great. Thank you very much. Finding this section of Challenger is an incredible discovery and one that the team can be very proud of. But the other mysteries that they're looking into are helping us to understand this very misunderstood section of ocean. What happened to the Avengers of Flight 19 and the Martin Mariner search aircraft is one of the enduring mysteries of aviation. The team's search over the previous documentary and this new series is passionate and serious. 
I'm really looking forward to seeing what they found in the six episodes of this new series, Bermuda Triangle Into Cursed Waters. And a welcoming Dave and Wayne back to dig into the behind the scenes in a future episode of The Damcasters. The series debuts on the History Channel in the US and Canada on Tuesday the 22nd of November, and it's here in the UK in January on Sky History. I've popped a link to the trailer for the series in the description below. Of course, time for the usual bit. If you're able to support the podcast in any way, that would be fantastic. That can either just be sharing the show with your friends, giving us a review, just pop some stars into whatever podcast app of your choice, and that will let me know how it's going and also helps the algorithms point us at new listeners. If you fancy joining us on Patreon, that all starts from just three pounds a month plus a bit of that. You get a thank you card from me in which you can have the fun of deciphering my handwriting. All of that is in the links in the description. But as always, thank you so much for listening. Your support of the podcast so far has been incredible. Next week, we have aerospace engineer Joe Welding joining us as we take a deep dive into how we may fly in the future and how a change in power source will have effects all through the design of the aircraft of tomorrow. As always, thanks so much for listening. And until next time, do take care of yourselves. The Damcasters is hosted and produced by Matt Bone, and it is a Boney Abroad podcast production. To check out our other podcasts, head to boneyabroad.com.